In this video, we're going to look at what we call a second type or a type 2 problem involving an equilibrium constant um, and an equilibrium uh, equation. So what we saw in type 1 was that type 1, the objective is to calculate the equilibrium constant. So that is what separates it sort of from these, this set, which we call type two. Now these types that we're referring to, this is just something internal to Fordham and it helps us to distinguish it for you. And we're gonna use this nomenclature as we go along. Um, but what distinguishes a type one from a type two is the objective for a type two is that we're gonna determine a concentration. So you can distinguish the, the one problem from the other by one is looking for an equilibrium constant and the other, the type two is looking for a um, an equilibrium concentration. So when we talk about type two, uh, I'm just going to highlight this. This is what makes it a type two. And there are a couple of different ways of, of doing type two problems. And we're going to look at in the first part of this, uh, we're, this, this video set is going to be broken up into two uh, videos. We're going to have a video where we look at questions that don't involve you having to use the quadratic equation and we're going to look at a uh, another type of video another type of question where it's basically the same exact setup as as what we're going to see in these but it, do, it it's going to require you to use the quadratic equation so again keeping in mind that what we're looking for is an equilibrium concentration the first one that we're going to look at and i'm going to make a note of this so this type of problem is where we're going to calculate uh, i'm going to put this at the top here so we're going to calculate a concentration, an equilibrium concentration, knowing all other equilibrium concentrations. So this is the type of problem that we're going to do now. We're going to calculate one equilibrium concentrations knowing all of the other equilibrium concentrations and K. So what's going to distinguish a type 1 from a type 2 is you're going to get a value for K. And you can see that right here. It says the KC for this reaction is 0.0415. And notice there's no units. And so the other thing that you're going to see is uh, the question is going to ask you, um, well, basically this one says how many moles of PCL5 are in the vessel at equilibrium? <clears throat> So in this case, it's asking you for the number of moles, but the idea is the same. It's, it's basically we're determining information about one of the um, reactants or products at equilibrium, whether it's a concentration or a number of moles. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Okay, so these are the, that's the tell. That's the setup. Uh, it, it asks you for information at, at equilibrium and um, for one of the reactants, and it says that, you know, KC for this is, um, it gives you KC in a value. Okay, so let's read the actual question and start to kind of pick things apart. So it says phosphorus pentachloride gives an equilibrium mixture of PCL5, PCL3, and Cl2 when heated according to the reaction below. A one liter vessel containing 250 degrees Celsius, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a one liter vessel at 250 degrees Celsius contains an unknown amount of PCL5 and 0.2 moles, I'm sorry, 0.02 moles each of PCL3 and Cl2 at equilibrium. How many moles of PCL5 are in the vessel? Okay, so in this case, what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, how many moles of PCL5 there are. And we know the number of moles each of PCL3 and Cl2. So the first step in any of these equations, in, in, in any of these um, uh, questions, whether it's type 1 or type 2, is to write down your K equation. So the K equation in this case is going to be K is equal to the concentration of PCL3 times the concentration of Cl2 divided by the concentration of PCL5. And remember, these are all at equilibrium, so we're going to put the little E's. And so the first thing we can do is we can start to extract out information from the question. So um, it gives us information about uh, the PCL3 and the Cl2 at equilibrium. So it says that the concentration, uh, we can get the concentration for PCL3 and Cl2 And the way that we can do that is by taking the number of moles, and these are going to be equivalent to each other, so I'm just going to write this down once. It's 0 0.020 moles divided by 1 liter, which makes things easier, is going to give us 0 0.020 molar. So now we know our equilibrium concentration, uh, and you'll notice that I put the E's there for those. Now this makes life a lot easier. If we're given equilibrium concentrations, we can plug those in and solve the equation, right? So at this stage, we have everything we need in order to get the equilibrium concentration of PCL5. So the important thing is that we're given 
the equilibrium concentrations. You'll see in the next example, what's going to differentiate the next example is we're not given equilibrium concentrations, but we're given initial concentrations. So that's going to sort of differentiate uh, that into a different type of problem. But again, we can get to the same answer. It's just going to involve an ice table. So let's start to plug things into our K equation. We have our value for K, which is 0 0.0415. And this is going to equal our 0 0.020 molar times our 0 0.020 molar. And we're going to be dividing this by the concentration of PCL5 at equilibrium, which we don't know. So if you reorganize this, you can get a concentration of PCL5 and you can calculate that um, basically by just reorganizing the expression above and doing some algebra as 0 0.00964 moles per liter. Um, and that's in molar. So remember, now one thing I want to kind of specify at this point is whenever you put anything into an equilibrium expression, these have to be these must be concentrations at equilibrium. A lot of students get a little confused when we give them moles. So you can do an ice table with moles, but it will you cannot put moles into the equilibrium expression. That won't work. The equilibrium expression will only work with concentration. So just be cautious that you, you put the right thing in here. Don't put the number of moles. Make sure that you calculate a proper molar concentration when you put this in here. Um, and you can do that simply by dividing the number of moles by the, the volume. Now, it just so happens in this case that the volume is one liter. It doesn't have to be one liter. It could be anything, and you would just divide by whatever the volume is. But in this case, it just so happens that it is one liter. Okay, and so then at the very end here, it does ask us for the number of moles. So we can come out of this by saying for, um, we had that, that our total volume is one liter. So when we multiply this by one liter, this is going to give us 0 0.00964 moles of the PCL5 at equilibrium. And that is the solution to the problem. So again, things to watch out for in this problem are, you know, be cognizant of what they're giving you. This first step, where we identify that these concentrations are at equilibrium, allow us to immediately put those into this expression and start to solve for things. Now, if, the th if we identify them as being initial, we cannot put them into the equilibrium expression because the equilibrium expression only works with equilibrium values. So that's one thing to watch out for. Another thing to watch out for is you got to make sure that when you're working with the K equation, you convert uh, everything into concentrations and that those concentrations are at equilibrium that go into that K equation. Once you have that, then you have everything you need. So this is a relatively simple problem, and you'd be surprised how many students when they take the exam, they overthink this and they try to do an ice table. If you're given the equilibrium values, you don't need to do an ice table. It's only if you get initial values that you need to do an ice table. Okay, so now let's take a look at another type 2 problem. So this is another type 2 problem in that broad category. But this one is different. And we're, the way that we're going to distinguish this one is this one is where we're, uh, we're calculating an equilibrium concentration and are given... initial concentrations um, and a K. So this is what dis distinguishes this problem from the previous one. So we're going to get an initial concentration or initial concentrations and, um, and a value for K. And then we're going to have to do an ice table here. So this one is going to involve an ice table because we're not getting equilibrium concentrations, we're getting initial concentrations. And there are going to be two flavors of this. Um, but really, the setup is the same. Uh, it, the setup is the same. It doesn't really make a difference. I'm not going to even distinguish between an, a quadratic and a non-quadratic. When we get to a certain point, you'll either be able to solve it without doing the quadratic equation, or you won't. And, so, and th that's how you'll kind of decide. And we'll see both of those. We'll see that the non-quadratic in this video and then in the next video, we're going to just um, break out the same exact question, but with a, um, with a non-quadratic. And I will show you one thing that may help you, although it doesn't always, it, it's, uh, it's generally speaking, something that will help you to identify whether you're probably going to need the quadratic or not. So let's take a look at this one. It says, what is the equilibrium composition of a reaction mixture if you start with 0.5 moles of H2 and I2 in a one liter vessel? 
that is heated to 458 degrees Celsius. Okay, so the question is asking us, so here are the things that we get. Um, we get a KC, so that's one thing that we need. So we get the value of K. And sometimes you'll notice that when we give you K, it may not be in the actual equation, but it may be given next to the balanced reaction itself. And see, another thing that we're going to get here is if you start with 0.5 moles of H2 and I2. So in this case, our concentrations of H2 and I2 initial are going to be equivalent to each other. And that's actually a little bit of a hint. So in when this when you wind up getting these problems, if you get two concentrations and they're the same, that generally is going to be when you are not going to have to do the quadratic equation. And I'll show you why. So when you have uh, two, two concentrations that are the same, that tends to be when you have a non-quadratic because it simplifies things. And I'll show you when it simplifies things. Okay, so let's calculate those concentrations. So uh, we get 0 0.500 moles of the uh, H2 and the I2 divided by one liter. And again, uh, I'm just putting one liter here in this particular question because it, it helps to simplify things a little bit just so that as we do the problem, you can kind of see it. But don't forget this step of, um, don't forget this step of actually calculating a proper concentration. And so this is gonna give us 0 0.500 molar as our concentration and again another thing that you should do what whether you start with the figuring out what you have from the problem or you start by writing the k that's fine but you got to do both of those things so another thing that we should do right off the bat is write our k equation in this case this is going to be the concentration of h i squared divided by the concentration of h2 and the concentration of i2 and so that that's another good thing to have um, on your piece of paper as you get started okay so if we're if we have initial conditions we cannot and if you remember these this equilibrium expression only accepts equilibrium values and we've identified these as initial values based on this term start that's what we're starting the reaction with so that those are initial so we cannot plug these values in that does not work here what we have to do is we have to set up an ice table in order to work through the stoichiometry and figure out what things will be at equilibrium. So let's start doing that. So we have H2, we have I2, we have HI, and then we have I, C, and E. And so we're starting with 0 0.500 molar, 0 0.500 molar, and we're starting with zero molar for the HI. And again, that's because it says that, you know, you're setting this reaction off with H2 and I2 and you don't have any HI in there. It's sort of implicitly said, stated in the setup. Okay, so now we have to do our setup for the change. So our reactants are gonna go away. So we're gonna put minus and then we go and look at the stoichiometry. So there's a one in front of the H2. So I put minus X, minus X. And then I put a plus in front of the HI because it's a product and we're gonna get plus 2x, and that's because of the stoichiometric coefficient 2. So we get 0 0.500 molar minus x, 0 0.500 molar minus x, and we get 2x as our equilibrium line. And so now what we can do is we can take these equilibrium values and plug them into our k equation. And so this is going to involve some algebra. So in this case, what we do is we're going to say, okay, our K is 49.7. And that is going to equal um, our 2X squared. And we put that in parentheses. Divided by 0 0.500 molar minus X times 0 0.500 molar minus X. And here's where things start to simplify and make life a little bit easier. So if you look at this and you kind of recognize this for what it is, what you have on top is you have 2x squared. And then on the bottom, we can sort of simplify the bottom to be that it's 49.7 is equal to 2x squared divided by 0 0.500 molar minus x squared. And this is what I was talking about uh, with the initial concentrations being the same. So when you have this, when you have the two concentrations on the bottom being the same, this winds up bringing this into a squared term, and then it makes life a lot easier because now to solve this, instead of having to do the quadratic, we can simply take the square root of the left and we can take the square root of the right. 
and that is going to give us um, our possible solutions. Now, I don't know if you remember this, but whenever you take the square root of something, there are two possible roots that you can have. You can have a plus root and a minus root. So we actually have to break this out into two separate equations. Um, and this is mostly, almost all, in almost all cases, the plus root is going to be the one that gives the right answer. But you should always check just to make sure. So the plus root, what you're going to do is you're just going to take the 49.7 is equal to 2x over 0 0.500 molar minus x. And that's your positive root. And then you can solve that one for x. You know, you can do your algebra and solve for x. And then there's a negative root where you can put a negative sign. You have to put a negative sign in at some, at some point, And I'm going to do that in front of the 2x. So you put minus 2x over 0 0.500 molar minus x, and then you solve that as well. Now, the reason for this is because when you square something, whether it's positive or negative, uh, it will always give you a positive result. So if you, take, if you square uh, 2, you get 4. If you square negative 2, you still get 4. So whenever you take a square root, you have to consider the possibility that it was coming from a negative root or that it was coming from a positive root to give the same answer. So that's why you have to include the negative root just to make sure. So when you solve these, you're going to get uh, two possible answers. When you solve the, this one, you're going to get a root. The root is going to equal uh, 0 0.3389 molar. And for this one, the root is going to equal 0 0.68 I'm sorry, 698 molar. And so the question becomes, which one of these is the root that makes the most sense? And to do this, what we have to do is we have to go back up here and check to see which one of these is going to make sense. So if you look, we can exclude this root because if you, if you plug this in for x and we did 0 0.500 molar minus 0 0.698 molar, this would give you a negative value for the concentration, and we can't have that. So we exclude this one because it doesn't make any sense. And that will always happen. You will either get a negative number, which will not work. You can't have a negative number. Or you will get a root that when you go back to try to plug it into these equilibrium values for the x, it will not make any sense. So we're going to select the 0.389 molar root as the correct one, and then we're going to go back and plug it in. Now, this is an important thing not to forget. Now, the question asks you for, you know, what is the, the question asks you for um, the equilibrium composition of the mixture. So we got to figure out each one of these things. Now we're going to solve for the concentration of H2 and I2 at equilibrium. And so this is going to be 2 times... Uh, I'm sorry, this is going to be 0 0.500 molar minus 0 0.389 molar, which is going to give us 0 0.111 molar. And our concentration of HI at equilibrium is going to equal 2 times 0 0.389 molar, which is going to equal 0 0.778 molar. And so these solutions, this, this set of solutions here where we have H2 and I2 at equilibrium and HI at equilibrium, that completes the, the problem. That gives you the equilibrium composition for all of them, for all the different products and reactants um, based on this setup.